Are you looking to get better at NBA 2K21 My League? Are there some features that you have no idea why they're there? In today's video, we'll cover everything about NBA 2K21 My League to hopefully make you a better My League player. Real quick before the video begins though, be sure to go down there and subscribe. We are so close to 5,000 subscribers and I would love to hit it before April 12th, my birthday. So please, if you are new, go down there, hit that red button. It's completely free and you can unsubscribe whenever you'd like. But without further ado, let's get into today's video. Here we go with today's video. Hopefully you guys are all having a fantastic day. Today, we are covering NBA 2K21 My League from A to Z. We're going through every single feature. Basically, this is our NBA 2K21 My League how-to guide, tips and tricks, either or. It's here. So straight away, my League, yeah, as you can see, we're on the title screen here. Click on My League, and to create yourself a brand new My League save, click Y. Press the Y button, or triangle, whatever your top button is. Go in there, and you can create yourself a brand new My League. Just to make sure, though, you can only save up to 10 files at a time. Otherwise, you're going to have to keep deleting them. So once you're here, press Brand New My League. Click A on there. To go over it quickly, you, if you want to have the NBA as it is right now, go to current NBA teams. How to do you know, an expansion team, go into league expansion. If you want to start in the off season, you start before this season started. So everyone's like on their teams before free agency. Or if you want just this season, start in regular season. You can then add up to six expansion teams. So if you click A on there, you can either create your own team, which I suggest you don't because it takes like 20 minutes. But if you want to, go ahead, do that. You can normally do a pre-built team, which is teams that 2K have already done, or download your own team design, which community teams designs can be quite good, and this is where I get my Seattle Supersonic jerseys and stadiums. In the custom league, you can do your own thing. You can't start in the off season for a custom league, but you can start in the regular season. This is very handy when you want to add other teams to the NBA. You can add yourself all-time teams and historic teams, such as the 76-77 Lakers. You can add them to the NBA. You can put them in different conferences. You can change conferences with teams. So if you want a certain team to be in the same division or conference as another team, you can just change it across. So say I want the 76ers in the Northwest Division in the Western Conference. So change your team. Say you want the 90-91 Warriors and the Atlantic Division in the Eastern Conference. Then you can put the Philadelphia 76ers in the Northwest Division of the Western Conference to see what would happen if a team changed conferences. Pretty simple. Also, I forgot to to mention while I'm at this screen if you want to download a roster like that's from the community press Y or triangle and you can go straight into here and you can go to user created rosters and you can download a roster that you want so say you want the 2010 Lakers you can download that team from the community and you can get that roster in current NBA teams once again you can either start in the off season and you start before free agency or you can start in the regular season and have everything up to date. Setup options go straight through there. So personally, I like to turn off nothing here. If I'm doing a fantasy draft, which is normally right here, you turn that on. Draft order, you can turn that on and then you can change it to a fixed one. Draft order means you can change which team goes where. Fixed is means it's the exact same for every single round. Serpentine means it's reversed. So say you have the first overall pick in the first round, you'll get the 30th overall pick in the second round, then you get the first, then the 30th. That's what serpentine means. And then fixed just means you get the first, 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 first every single time. But if you are just doing a normal rebuild, turn fantasy draft off. Another feature that I do like turning off is the automatic league expansion. It means that the league you just can't randomly expand. Uh, I turn progressive fatigue off, team chemistry off, and rule changes off. If you guys want to have it realistic, you can have these two turned on. I personally like keeping rule changes off. That way it keeps the NBA the same as it is right now. And also league expansion, that way teams just don't get randomly added. Restrictions. So, in real life, these restrictions do exist. However, in 2K21, if you want to make more trades, make sure these restrictions are turned off. The step in rule turned off as well. Basically, it just means that you can trade players straight away. So, recently signed restriction means you can't trade anybody once you've signed them. Recently traded restriction means you can't trade them again once you have traded for them. And then rookie signing restrictions means once you've signed a rookie, you cannot trade them for a certain period of time. And then the step in rule means that you can't trade back-to-back -back first round picks in the same year. So I like turning those four rules off. Everything else I keep turned on. It's just easier. Injuries. 
you can turn those off as well. It just it makes it a lot easier. Injuries just get pain in the ass in 2K. And then everything else here, I leave at 50. I leave absolutely everything the same as it is right now. Then once you're done here, you press start to advance, and then you get to choose what team you want to be. Personally, uh, for the purposes of today's video, let's just spin the wheel, and we get, oh, we get a Detroit Pistons. Now, as soon as you load it up, it can give you a chance to choose draft classes. Um, if you don't have an internet connection, you can auto-generate rookies. Or if you'd like to create a draft class, you can go straight in there and make it as realistic as you would like. I like to go load slash download draft class. That means it, from the community, other people from the game that have made draft classes and have uploaded it to 2K, you can then download their draft classes. So you go to user creator draft classes and you can get yourself a variety of drafts that you want to use. Personally, I use this one here. Here up the top. If you find that you've downloaded the wrong draft class that you didn't want to download, go across over to scouting, go to prospect scouting, click on the first uh, prospect, and then go straight down to load slash download draft, draft class, and you can then load up again. Historic draft classes, if you're doing an older rebuild, you can download these for a more accurate draft class uh, of those draftees coming in. If you find it all during this video that you are lost, this is a brief summary. I don't go in depth with it. If you want more in depth videos, click the playlist that just came up there. It's 2K How To. It helps you out a lot. Basically, it's a more in depth look onto specific things because today we're just glancing over it. So click on there if you want more in depth videos. So this opening page that you get here is the season. If you guys would like to play in a game, just click on it, press A, and you can get yourself into this menu. If you want to play the game, you click on play game, and it will open up this menu here where you can see the team comparisons. Uh, if you want to play, then you just press start game. If you want to change the uniforms, press Y, and you can change what uniforms you would like. If you press the right bumper, you can go across one. There is a social media tab. If you go across again, you can try, You can make an untouchables list. So to say we wanted to keep Jeremy Grant as an untouchable, we list him as an untouchable. If there's a player that we want to trade, put on the trading block like Mason Plumley, we put him there. And if we want someone that we, if there's someone that we specifically really, really want, we chuck them on the target list. That's basically how those work. And then one more across, you get yourself the team status. So as you can see, there's a playoff picture there. You can see your team stats in the middle and your starting five and your sixth man on the right, just below me here. So once you're here, here, you can press B, go back, and you can open all this menu. League news, I don't really look at too much until like end of the season. Social media, you've seen that. Transaction reports, this is basically a log of everyone that has been signed, traded, hirings, anything that happens in the league, you can find it here, pretty easy. NBA records, basically all the records hold by every single player right now. League history, as you can see who was the MVPs, rookie of the year, six mans, you can see past champions there as well, league leaders, it's pretty simple. We're gonna go to the next important window, which is the front office. So once you're here, click the right bumper again. Uh, or even the right triggers, right and left triggers, they also work. So front office, bang, roster. You can go press A and you can see your roster. If you would like to go across to propose trade, click on there. This is a lot more difficult to talk about. I have made a video on how to trade. Click right above me there. You can click right above me here. Uh, there's a video there that says how to trade for players. Basically, basic gist, if you want to trade someone, uh, we'll go say like Mason Plumley uh, from our team. And then on the right hand side, you can collect, select a player that you want to trade for. Say I wanted Hassan Whiteside. As you can see, that trade does not go through because the Kings would acquire 5.07 million more than allowed. So you go back over here, look, have a, have a look to see anyone that's making 5 million. Oh, Rashawn Holmes is making 5 mil. Perfect, but this trade still doesn't go through. Why is that? You can press start again, and it says this is an illegal trade for the Pistons. A team can have at most 15 players on its roster during the season. Which means if we go over here, go down all the way down here, check to see who's the lowest earning guy. Tip for you, two-way contract, you cannot trade. So don't even try. If you have a look, see who's here. So you could go, say, Wayne Ellington. As you can see, he's on a minimum contract. Click him in there. Look, valid trade. Will the trade go through? Try again. Bang. Not interested. However, I have a counter offer that I think works out nicely for both sides. And boom. The computer has put in a trade offer that they think is reasonable. If you think it's reasonable, then you can go over here, press start. You can make this trade. Press yes. 
And then there we go, they have agreed to that offer and you've got yourself Hassan Whiteside and Rashawn Holmes. An easier way to make trades is to just use the trade finder. Instead, you could just go over here, click on the player you want to trade, go bang, bang. Say you want to trade Whiteside and Holmes and then the computer automatically offers up the trades that it thinks is reasonable for them. So say we want to trade Rashawn Holmes and Hassan Whiteside. If we just go using the right trigger, you can go have a look to see who is offering you what. A trade finder can sometimes give you really good trades. It can sometimes give you really bad trades. Personally, if I was doing a rebuild and I got offered Rashawn Holmes and Hassan Whiteside for Capella, I'd do that. So once again, you press start and it takes you to this page, which you've seen before. Again, it will, don't need to change anything. You can press yes, and the trade will go straight through straight away. So now we have Clint Capella on our team. Another cheeky tip is if you would like to improve a player's you know, value, you can press start on the roster when you're on the roster menu, press start button, bang, and it comes up with this, quick edit mode, press okay, and look at this. If you move your left analog stick left, one thing, then you come up with the position. You can then move your right down, and as you can see, their, their overall does go up when you change their positions. A little hint, every center at the power forward goes up overall. Almost every shooting guard at the small forward goes up. Every point guard at the shooting guard goes up, and just don't even try moving players to the power forward. It doesn't work. Unless it's Terry Rozier for some reason. And basically what that does is then you can press on them, and they'll have more trade value than they had before. Before, when Clint Capella was a center, he had three and a half stars. Now, as a power forward, he has four stars, which means he has an extra half star value, which means we can then trade for even higher class players, such as Zach Levine. So as you know, Clint Capella was an 86 before. We can then trade for Zach Levine, who is an 88. So you go through there, you've now got yourself a great player in Zach Levine. Another trick that you could do, go to free agents, as you can see. Uh, go to free agents on that same front office page. You can see every single free agent. We give you a little tip. At the beginning of every single rebuild, go here and sign DeMarcus Cousins, if you can, of course. Right now, we tried to do that, but we do not have we do not have a roster spot available for him. So to change that, go to your roster, and then go all the way down here. So who's your worst player? You see Tyler Cook. Click on him, then you can go to release the free agency. Press yes, and you've freed up a roster spot, and you can sign yourself a player such as DeMarcus Cousins. This screen here is the screen that you'll see during free agency when you want to sign a player. Uh, if you go across to here, you can move the salary, how much you want to offer him to the left and the right, and you can offer them money. The next one down is how many years you want to have him on that contract. So the lowest you can go is one, then you can go two, three, four, and if you've got bird rights on him, you can go five years. However, I'm personally for this, for this, for DeMarcus Cousins right now, I'm going to go three. Uh, you keep it as a backloaded contract, it's the best one. Uh, and then you can also go for an option, you can go a player option, which they really like. So most players really prefer taking a player option. So if you really want to sign someone important, try and give them a no player option. Team option, they don't really love, like too much, but as a team, that gives you more flexibility with your cap. And then with no trade clause, only use those for players that you really, 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 really want. Otherwise, it's not worth giving it to them. But for now, we're going to offer DeMarcus Cousins an 18.16 mil contract for two years plus a team option for the final season. It's a backloaded contract, so he gets paid more at the back end of his deal. Team option, and he has a no trade clause. Once you're ready for that, press A to offer that contract. Would you like to offer this contract to DeMarcus? Yes. And then DeMarcus has happily accepted that offer. So then, if we go back to our roster, you can see DeMarcus Cousins is on our roster now. Another way to keep track of your salary and your team's finances, go to the salary cap table on that front office tab, go to salary cap table, and you can see how much you're paying every single player. So Buddy Heald is gonna be our highest paid player this season with $24.43 million. And then for the next three seasons, he's getting paid 18, 18, and $20 million. Zach Levine's getting paid $19.5 million for two seasons. Uh, Jeremy Grant's getting paid about $20 million over three seasons. Really, this is how you find out who's getting paid and how do you free up cap. The further along that there is a salary, the longer the contract is, and the higher the amount, the higher the contract is getting paid. Blue means they have a team option at the end of their contract. Yellow means they have a trade exception. So if, once they're gone, we do have an exception for them. And then green is a player option, which means you don't, you don't have any control. The player controls that option. We go across to coaching. So go across to the coaching tab. You can press on coach game plan. So you can have a specific game plan for absolutely every single team in the NBA. 
I find that that takes up too much time. You can just click on all teams and you can have the same rotation for every single team. So if you want to rebuild the rotation, you press Y or triangle on your controller, press yes, then you can rebuild your rotation. So as you see, we have a rotation of Dennis Smith Jr., Zach Levine, Sadiq Bay, Jeremy Grant, and Demarcus Cousins right now. And if you keep scrolling down, you can find more and more players with all of them the minutes if you want to go across to a uh, coach profile press the right trigger and you can set up how your coach plays uh, plays every single player bench depth is basically the only one that i run that i change i either change it to a 10 or a nine man rotation depending on the situation on what players i have but basically you can go through all this and set up how your coach coaches your team and then if you press it one more time press the right trigger one more time you go across and you can choose your scoring options and then you can go across to your player your best player who you want the ball in the hands more often and you can put that the ball in their hands more often. I like doing this as well just to see who gets most points. Next up is system proficiency. I use this quite a lot every single rebuild. So as you can see, active system is a perimeter centric system. And below me right here, you can see the positives and negative of each system. I'm not gonna go through every single one, uh, but basically if you don't wanna read those things, you can check the overall system proficiency with the stars. As you can see, perimeter centric is a three star system. If we go across, press the right trigger, it's two and a half star system with a post centric system. If we go to the, press it again, we get a three star system with the triangle. We have a three star system with seven seconds. We have a two star system with def defense. Basically, the more stars you have, the better the system. And the better the system, the better the team plays. So if you have find yourself having a five star system proficiency, you're more likely gonna win a championship. If you guys wanna practice plays in your playbook, go to practice plays freestyle so you can practice people's releases. On the fly lineups, you don't really need to look at, don't really need to look at that, and you can do the same with scrimmaging. Scouting, uh, team intel. So if you go into team intel, you can see what every team is planning on doing. So as you can see, right above where it says team status rebuilding, it means, and then the very direct line underneath it, rebuilding means it's rebuild time for them. So they will want prospects or draft picks rather than aging veterans, unless they are on an expiring deal. So basically it says they want draft picks, young players, or expiring deals because they are rebuilding. So it's gonna be more likely that if you want a player from that team, you offer up expiring deals and draft picks. One that you do really, really, really need to look at is teams that are selling. They won't, a team will not, a team will not be selling unless it's the trade deadline. I suggest every single trade deadline to stop the sim, have a look to see what team is selling. If there is a player that you would like on a team that is selling, you're more likely going to be trading for it. Selling, it's a seller's market in Detroit right now. They're going to want to start stockpiling draft picks and prospects. Basically, if you give them a young, play, young players and draft picks, they're more likely going to trade their superstar player to you. If you want to have a check to see what rookies are doing, bitch, you can check out prospect scouting, mock drafts, big boards, draft boards, just to see how players are going up against each other. Training, I don't look too far into except for this player mentorship one, which if you use, so say you want a player to get a mentored, uh, you go to say a young player such as say Dennis Smith Jr. He's 23, he's a point guard. And then if we go say get a your older player such as say Demarcus Cousins and you want and you want um, Dennis Smith Jr. to pick up on the, a certain badge. So this is basically how you get badge progressions really, really well. Uh, the better the badge for the mentor, the quicker the badge progression for the mentee. So if you want them to quickly get a very good uh, badge, go over to them, select on a, say, moving truck, brick wall, and box. If you want those three badges to be developed for that mentee, you click on those, just press A, and then afterwards press Start select as their mentor and those badges should progress very very nicely in the by the end of the season uh, for the mentee and you have three uh, mentees so you can have three mentor mentee partnership expansion you don't need to worry about that relocation don't even worry about that standings this is very good if you want to see where you're ranked up against each other you can have a look here and see where everyone's standing in the nba right now it's only toronto raptors who have played also if you want to check the power rankings to see where your team is projected you can have a look through here to see where every single team is projected to end up at the end of the season Detroit pistons are projected 29th so it's not going to be good at season stats you can check all the league leaders for everything so as you can see points per game you can see everyone who's been 
in the scoring. You can then sort everything out by pressing X. You can sort it from best to worst. Really basic gist. If you want to check your team's player stats, you go to player statistics and you can see your team statistics in particular. If you want to see G League leaders, you press G League and see who's fallen in the G League. And then if you want to see how your team ranks up against every everybody else, uh, you can just go across here and you can basically just sort everything out to see how they work. Tuning sliders, I don't, personally, I don't trade, I change these at all, but if you do want to change the sliders, uh, like progression and all that, go over here and you can have some fun, just read through them and have a look to see what is there so you can change what you would like. Another tip, if you guys would like to have a bit of a quicker game, you can go to ticker settings and turn off like headlines, uh, all-star voting, power rankings, big boards, you can turn everything like that off if you'd like a little bit of a faster sim. I'm not sure how much it changes. Mine's fine anyway so I'm not sure how much it changes but if you would like to experiment with that go ahead right ahead I think it does help with sim speed but yeah once you've done all that once you've made all your trades once you've got your team sorted your rotation sorted sorted your mentee mentors sorted then you can go over back to this menu here press a press simulate regular season and it simulates the entire regular season once you've simulated the season, it comes up with all the awards. So Joel Embiid wins MVP. Uh, if you just, with the left analog stick, you can then scroll through every single award, or you can even use your, track, uh, your arrow pad. You go through there. Once you're done there, press advance. Then you can see all the NBA teams. Click the right and left triggers to change those. You can see who makes all those teams. Uh, once again, press advance, and then you get to this playoff tree. So you can see where your team is. Pistons are not in the playoffs. If they were, say, the uh, seventh seed taken on the Celtics, you can click on that team. And then you can go, there should be more options there, so like play game, but you can, or like simulate with sim card. Press simulate round if you want it to go quickly, and it simulates that entire round, and you can see if you win or lose. Then do that for the exact same for every single playoff series. Then once you've won the championship, and uh, you've seen who wins finals and MVP, press advance, press advance again, and you're in the off season. Then you can just basically flow through the off season. Hardest part is free agency, and we've already been over that. Easy as. I will give you a quick rundown. Player retirements, you can see what teams have, what players have retired from the NBA. Staff retirements, I don't really care. You just sim over that. I sim over league realignment. I norm, sometimes I look at the draft lottery because if you go in there, you can see what teams have a percentage to winning that first overall pick. And then if you want to skip it, press advance, press skip, and you can see what happens. We actually ended up with the third overall pick, which is cool. Uh, staff signing. Uh, okay, yeah, I'll go over this. So assistant GM is very important because you want better contracts and better trading. It means you can get players for cheaper and uh, less money. So if you want a good assistant GM, uh, pick up those guys and then you offer the same. It's like the same as player free agency. Offer them the years, the amount of money, make their offer, and then it happens. If you want a better head coach, you go over here and press fire. And then you can have a look to see who our head coaches are available. So say you want Oliver Gordon, same as that, just offer that contract. Uh, and then the trainer is also very handy. If you get want a better trainer, A minus gives you an A minus is the minimum for three training camps. That if you have A, you get three training camps. If you have B trainer, you get two, and if you get a C or lower, you get one training camp. So I suggest trying to get yourself an A training. Um, trainer I'll offer them money as well and then if you press advance you can get yourself sign who you would like and then perfect those are the only three staff positions that really matter then you can sim over catch up scouting uh, you can sim over draft combine sim over pre-draft workouts if you don't have a good draft first round pick uh, just sim over draft and you can go straight to rookie signings to see who your team automatically drafted uh, and then you can see we picked up Kyrie Walker with our third overall pick team player options you can see who you want to bring back who decides to come back if they have a player option uh, simple as that qualifying who you can bring back on the restricted free agency and that's really about it free agency you know how this all works play progression is also a very handy one to have to have a look at play progression is also a very very handy one to have a look at because you can see what players are going up and what players are going down if they have green it means they're progressing very well if they're red like the Marcus Cousins it means they're getting older and that they're they're falling off so you probably want to trade them if they are in the red next one is training camps like I said if you with your trainer you can get yourself more so with three training camps you can choose whichever you want it's pretty self-explanatory it has camp description there so choose who what camp you'd like to go and then you can choose who would like to go to that camp so say if we wanted a big man offense to say Jeremy Grant to get better at in post moves we can send him to that training camp. However, you can only send one player uh, to a training camp every single off season. And then you just advance the next season and you're back to the beginning. That's how my league works. It's simple as that. Like I said during the video, this is only a rough 
guide on how to do it. If you guys would like to see more, be sure to click on that playlist to see more in-depth videos on how to can do certain things in NBA 2K21. But I am going to leave this video here. Thank you guys all so much for watching. If you guys learned or enjoyed it, be sure to go down there and subscribe. It does mean a lot. We're trying to hit 5,000 subscribers and we could use your help. So please go down there, subscribe, like the video. It helps us out a bunch. Or you could even just click there because that just came up. Or there if you want to watch another video. Go on. Wouldn't hurt you. Go on. Click, click another video. Click another video. I know you want to. But that's going to do it, lads. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Push!